Welcome to Type-C Tech Reviews. Today we're going to be unboxing the Dell S3222 HG 32-inch gaming monitor. And as always, if at any point during the video you want to check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. I do got you guys, but let's get this thing unboxed. Now Dell typically has some of the easiest unboxings, so let's see if this is a similar story. Now, for a 32-inch monitor, this is a pretty massive box, so I'm assuming Wow, yeah, they always have fantastic, fantastic packaging. They even have a little guide on how to unbox it. But pretty basic stuff, this is your power cable, a display port cable, and some paperwork. Now the nice thing is, this is just like a standard power cable. There is no power brick, which is a lot more expensive if that one breaks, so that's really good. Now also in the box, we have the stand, which is nice. It's their new style stand from Dell, or have they been using this for a while? Maybe they have. Whatever though, it's nice, it's a nice plastic on top but it is really nice. Then all on the bottom is a complete thing of metal with a high quality thumb screw. And then lifting the cardboard off, we have the arm in here to actually stand up the monitor. And again, this is a similar story, nice black plastic, matte black plastic on the outside. And we have a little bit of gloss accenting right there, which I think is gonna be on the back of the monitor. Now, a really nice thing is this is a clip in, which is super nice, but to put this together, all you do, slide the stand on there and just twist. And you can just do this by hand. You don't need a Phillips head screwdriver. All right, now that that's on there, pretty attractive stand. All you're gonna need to do to set this thing up, super easy. Just move the plastic like that. They even cut it for you. Slide in the top and then that's it. Then the monitor is ready to come out, which this thing looks big because I've been using a 27 inch monitor for a little bit now. And then taking the plastic off, that is Beautiful. I don't know exactly how curved this is. All right, but right away, I think it's very attractive. You got the Dell logo down there, which kind of has that like rainbowy cool effect on it. Let's check out the stand. It has tilt. Ooh, very nice and smooth tilt. Height adjustability could be a little bit smoother. Does it have rotation? It does if you move it. So no swivel, no rotation, but it does have height adjustability and really nice smooth tilt. All right, now on the back of the monitor, you have those four buttons and the joystick. The Dell menu system is good. It's not the best in the world. I typically never use these four buttons. They're supposed to make it faster. I don't find that they do, but there's no problem with that. But let's get down here and look at the ports. We do have a little bit of integrated cable management, which does make it easier to cable manage. Okay, so one thing I've never really liked about the Dell Alienware monitors is how far they're under here. It makes it easier to hide the cables. However, I still prefer LG to just have them coming out the back even though some people don't like that. So you have a display port, a three and a half millimeter audio out, and then two HDMIs, and then you're, that's where you plug in your power over there. So not a ton of ports, uh, but again, how many do you need? Maybe your Xbox, maybe your PC, and then something else. So let's get this thing hooked up, and then I'm gonna give my first initial gaming impressions, and we're gonna do a ghosting test. All right, guys, now that it's all set up, let's turn this thing on. I do like they have a dedicated power button right here with a little light. All right, then right off the bat, you choose your language. And yeah, overall, it's pretty, it's big. 32 inches. Jumping right into the settings, we have some preset modes over here. We got standard, FPS, MOBA, slash RTS, RPG, sports, game one, game two, game three, comfort view, warm, cool, and then custom color. We're gonna go into standard. We have AMD FreeSync Premium, and then the different response time settings, which is fast, super fast, and MPRT. Dark stabilizer, hue saturation. But let's go down to the brightness, which is at 75%. So let's turn that all the way up. We're gonna turn that all the way up to 100%, and wow. That was surprising. I was expecting this to be a little bit dimmer because uh, again, this is super budget friendly, 32 inch. That actually gets pretty dang bright and it's very colorful and vibrant. Wow, like there's a lot of lights in the room right now and it's quite vibrant, I, I'm, I'm impressed. All right, so the other thing we're gonna check is we're gonna go into NVIDIA control panel and we're gonna check if this thing can output 10 bits of color. I'm not expecting it to, but let's see if it does. And it does not. So this can only go up to eight bits maximum, uh, which I did expect. Although this is only doing 60 Hertz, let's bump this all the way up to 120. All right, now we did change it to its max refresh rate of 165 Hertz. Weird thing is I couldn't do it through NVIDIA control panel. I had to do it through the advanced display settings in Windows, but whatever, it did it. Obviously super smooth. Now, this is a super budget friendly 32 inch 1800R curve, 32 inch gaming monitor from Dell. Now, this is only 1080p at 32 inches, which as you know, obviously it's gonna be a lower PPI. You can definitely notice pixelation. However, a big thing is if you're a console player, one, if your rig is not super powerful, or if you just want a big screen but don't wanna pay much, this may be a good option. It's definitely bright. Definitely vibrant. I think it's like 330 bucks. It seems like it could be a really good deal if you're a specific type of person. If your rig can push 1440p, 
I would go with another one, but if you wanna hit those high 160 frames, 165 frames, and if you can only do it in 1080p, but you want a big screen, this may be the perfect monitor. We'll have to see though. But let's jump in Warzone and see how this thing games. And obviously like the PS5 would be huge for this because as of right now, the PS5 cannot output 1440p. High refresh rate 4K monitors are extremely expensive as of now. So this might be a really good way to get a big screen size for something like the PS5 or Xbox Series S. All right guys, right away dropping into it. Obviously it is smooth because this is 165 Hertz. First thing I really realize is uh, you can definitely tell a difference in resolution. However, when you're moving around this quickly in game, does it make a massive difference? Um, I don't know. Uh, obviously, when you start zooming in, like if you're a sniper, that's when you can start to see it a little bit. Uh, however, I don't think I've ever actually used a 1080p 32 inch monitor before. Um, right off the bat, I mean, I will say, the brightness is really good. The vibrancy is really good. Um, the resolution obviously is lacking, but you save a little money that way. So, you know, I'm not 100% I'm not sure yet. But again, going native resolution is always better. So if you have something like a PS5, this monitor could be huge. And a 32 inch 1080p monitor might not be a bad thing. Now this being a VA panel, we are gonna wanna test the ghosting. And we're gonna wanna test the ghosting in a dark area on the map because that's when you can start seeing other different kind of artifacting going on like red green ghosting. We've had that before on some other monitors. Um, however, this has a four millisecond gray to gray response time. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. It seems like pretty good stats though, and it seems like a very pretty, I mean, it's a very pretty monitor. Is the price competitive enough? That's the big thing. Now, the overall gaming experience is not bad, but when there's like a static screen, you can see, like look at the guns here. You can see the, like obviously it's a little bit pixelated, right? This is, this is a fairly low PPI, but again, um, I would rather, especially in a game like Warzone or faster paced games like that, I would definitely way rather have um, like 160 frames, higher refresh rate rather than resolution um, most of the time. So if you are prioritizing a higher refresh rate, this could be a fantastic thing for like the PS5 or Xbox Series X or S. Yeah, when moving around the map too much, you don't really notice it, but let's check the uh, in-game ghosting right here to see anything going on. So let's go to a really dark spot. Um, you can see right here, usually you would see some like red green style ghosting. We're not really seeing any of that, uh, so that's not a that's definitely a really good thing. I've noticed that Dell recently with their VA panels, which is what this is, uh, which is why it's so inexpensive, they've been doing a really good job with ghosting, and that's the one reason that you may want to get this over something like the Gigabyte, the Gigabyte 32 inch one. I think it's called a 32Q something Q1, but that one is like almost the same price as this one, and it's 1440p. So the one deciding factor will be the ghosting. So let's do that test right now. Okay, pulling up the ghosting test right away. Uh, it looks quite good. Definitely better than the Gigabyte. Um, however, let's go through all the different response time settings, figure out one which one is the best one, and figure out totally how good or bad the ghosting is with all of the response time settings. So you go down here to response time. It's currently on fast, which I think is the lowest setting. So let's go to super fast. It's got a little bit of ghosting, but honestly really good for a VA panel. But going into super fast, um, definitely takes down the ghosting by quite a bit. Super fast mode, because it seems like, it definitely seems like we're not seeing any pixel over shooting. The ghosting is incredibly minimal. Uh, there's definitely a little bit of ghosting, but I mean, this thing is really close to an IPS panel and fast IPS panels are like basically no ghosting. Some of the best ones by LG have basically no ghosting. This is pretty incredible with ghosting. So if you're into fast paced games, um, this might be the best VA panel on the market for ghosting currently. I mean, it's pretty amazing. When you see a lot of these other VA panels, sometimes they have an insane amount of ghosting. This one, it's quite good. But yeah, again, if you wanna check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. I do got you guys, but make sure to check out my channel below, Type C Tech Reviews, for the full review because it will be coming out very soon if it's not already out, which it probably is. Because this was just the first impressions and the unboxing, I will have a full review, so check out my channel below. But this was Type C Tech Reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next video.